Welcome to Lawmen, a podcast about local legends and obscure curiosities from days of yore. I'm James Shakechuft. And I'm Alistair Beckett-King. And Alistair, I did a thing that sometimes happens about an hour before we recorded this podcast. What was that? I realised that the main story I prepared was not quite enough, so I needed to desperately flick through my various books of folklore. Frantically bolstering. Massively bolstering. I think it worked out really well, James. It just gave everything a bit of a feel of lockdown fever. LDF. What's the name of the story? It's the story of Odd Robin. Odd Robin. Odd Robin. Very peculiar, man. It's so very odd. Alistair. Hello. Young Master James. Hello. Ah, that's nice. That made me feel like your ward. (laughs) Yeah. I saw myself as like your housekeeper or butler. Young Master James, the carriage is ready as you requested. Thanks, old man Alistair. I'll take it from here. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know how people speak to servants. I think they say, I'll take it from here. I'll take it from here. I'll take it from here. Which is like, it's been done. I'm just going to show it off to some other posh people. Alistair. Young Master James, how are you? I'm good. I'm going to do some revisiting this episode. Whoa. Yeah. Have we finished folklore? We've we've completed all the towns and villages in the UK. Does that mean we're finally free from the curse? No, because I've I've realised that there was one thing I didn't tell you enough about last time we came to Chipping Camden. Oh. So I need a sort of a previously on Lawmen sting here. How do you make a previously on Lawmen happen? Previously on Lawmen. And that is the tale of the Camden Wonder. Also, Chipping Camden has a ghost bear. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> I'm not letting you include the ghost bear because I feel like you're Damn. just going to add loads of supernatural points Mm-mm. to an unrelated bear. If you actually hear the story of the ghost bear, it's clearly not a ghost. <laughs> it's just a bear. <laughs> I mean, does anybody in the Cotswolds have any critical faculties whatsoever? Or like that. Uh, how did you do that? Just remembered to put it in in the edit afterwards. Oh, okay, right, yeah. Then how did, did I hear it? That, this is confusing. Yeah, it's magic. It's a kind of magic. It is a kind of magic. Is that what that song was about? Editing? Yeah. yeah. It's a kind of magic. That was a working title of Blink of an Eye. <laughs> the Walter Murch book. Yes, yes. You can't expect our listeners to get references as obscure as that. Google it. It's a classic text. I went on a limb because I can't even quite remember the name. I think it's In the Blink of an Eye. That's Walter Murch, director of the scariest children's film ever, Return to Oz. That's who we were referring to, if if that went over your head. Is he, did he direct that? He dire- it's the only film he directed, and it's an absolute banger. It's a terror fest. The Gnome King doesn't allow chickens anywhere in ours. Oh, this is tying in very well then to the tales that I'm going to be telling you. Also, quick sidebar, when I went to mime school, <laughs> the... <laughs> Have you told me before that you went to mime school and I've blanked it out as a thing I'd prefer not to believe? I think so because I would have done my joke that I went to mime school, I don't like to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke. But the guy, the tutor of the mime school, mm. the head of the mime school, Desmond Jones, I think his name was. Right. He taught the wheelers how to wheel. Uh, did he? He trained the wheelers. Uh, it was the wheelers I just impersonated there. Yeah, the wheelers are the terrifying bewheeled baddies mm-hmm. from Return to Oz. The second scariest bit, I think, are the wheelers. Yeah. The scariest bit is Mombi's heads all screaming. Yeah, waking up and screaming, yeah. And the headless body sort of flailing around in the background. (laughs) What a film, kids. Oh, yeah. Sorry, we're talking about a kids' film. It's 1985. We know how to make kids' films by then. Yeah. And, yeah, Walter Merge goes out there and makes the the gothest. Every kid who watched that grew up to be a goth. How do you start a kids' film? Uh, Electroshock therapy? Okay. (laughs) What's a good sort of format for a kids' film? It was all a dream or it was all a sort of fit induced by electroshock therapy. And being swept off in a flood (laughs) post-electroshock therapy. Yeah. It's a great but terrifying movie. It's a great film. Anyway, previously on Previously on Lawmen, we talked about Chipping Camden, where we talked about the Camden Wonder, and I briefly teased that there was a ghost bear 
in the town. Yeah. This isn't a major part of my story. This is just a little sort of ease us back into the vibe of Chipping Camden. Mm. What had happened was there used to be a little visitor to Chipping Camden. He's described as being small. A lot of the people in these stories today are described as being small. I presume they're adults and not children but yeah a small dark-haired foreigner oh yeah yeah not my words the words of (laughs) a book about folklore hercule poirot by the sounds of it (laughs) used to visit chipping camden bringing with him a bear oh that would dance while he played the fiddle a textbook dancing bear it makes me sad though because few of those bears are dancing from joy yes yes definitely you know you want the bear to be dancing because nobody's looking but those bears are dancing because people are looking and paying and one person in particular is looking yeah and probably has a stick unfortunately it's not as much fun as it sounds a dancing bear no in their little cages there's no room for a sign that says live laugh love <laughs> <laughs> Or wine o'clock. <laughs> it would have no meaning to a bear, the phrase wine o'clock. Am I drinking Prosecco yet? <laughs> hey, we've made animal abuse fun, so let's move on. Fortunately, that animal abuser gets his comeuppance. Good. One harsh winter, when apparently the area was close to famine, he became seriously ill and died. Je suis malade. Ouais. And when he'd been buried, some travellers from the Cheltenham area took the dancing bear away, and it's it's apparently never been known what happened to the beast. But the following winter, people began to talk about a big, shambling beast wandering around the area where the bear had used to dance. (sighs) By the way, that place was called Heavenly Corner. Oh, I will recall her. No. Oh. And it was said by many that it was the ghost of the dancing bear come to look for his master. That is a level of affection from the master that I wouldn't have expected from the bear. Yeah, it sounds like it's got bear Stockholm syndrome. You're using that in the youth slang sense of bear. Yes, but that oh, fortunately that does also fit. Yeah. Uh, to, to show that it was a bear version. Mm. What is the word for bears? Like, because otherwise I'm just going to keep saying bear. Like, you know, you have poor sign for pig. Ursine. U R S I N E. Ursine. Oh, Ursine. As an Ursa major, Ursa minor. Big bear, baby bear. And one bear that was just right. <laughs> Few dogs were seen around that part of Camden on wintry nights. And if one did go to that bit, the heavenly corner, they would start yelping and run away with their tails between their legs. Because the bear's like, get out of here, get out of here, leave me alone. Because also, I've got a couple of things I think about bears whenever I think about bears. One, they look like a human in a dog costume. Mm -hmm. And two, the grizzly bears especially are terrifying, but they have undermined by the way their nose sort of wobbles around when they roar, I think. You know, it sort of twitches. Did you know that I think, going back to editing, I think they don't roar. You see in films, they go back on their hind legs and they roar. Mm -hmm. I think that they dub a lion's roar over it. Really? Because they don't really make a sound. It's just not good enough. So they put a a lion's roar on the top of it wow which Did which is dangerous that. actually because you could be camping and you could be hearing roar, and thinking i'm safe here roar. but not realizing that's that's the sound of a bear approaching i was going to say the thing about no dogs were seen there is i think we forget how full of dogs everywhere was in the past yeah just knocking around yeah if you ever watched hundreds of silent movies because you had to because you went to film school there's just dogs in the background of every shot because they're just shooting on location and there's just stray dogs. And they couldn't get rid of the dogs. Or, and they, yeah, they can't afford... It's not Hollywood. They're just filming in the street. And so there's just dogs walking around the whole time. The area was thick with dog. The stock things of a British silent movie are a dog in the background and a baker having a fight with a miner so that the miner gets covered in flour and the baker gets covered in coal dust and they swap oh, they swap colours they swap lives that is the plot of I'm going to say 90% of films from the 1920s <laughs> Baker Minor Confusion Baker Minor Conflict which in reality there's a lot of class solidarity between those two groups they're rarely actually in conflict they don't often meet in the wild <laughs> <laughs> but in 1920s films it was straight out of the mine Straight to a baker's, straight to a mill to fight. It's a, actually thinking about it, it was a miller, wasn't it? Well, that would make more sense that they would have flour all over the place rather than a baker. Anyway, well, well bakers get flowery. Bakers can get flowery. If any, if we've learned anything from today's episode, is sometimes bakers get flowery. Kids. Oh, actually, I've just noticed this as well. When the dogs ran away from that heavenly corner, 
they ran towards the other end of town, which is called Catbrook. Oh, cats won't like that. No. So, and the cats presumably ran on to Miceville <laughs> and so on. That is the ghost bear that I referred to in the previously on Lawmen bit. Previously on Lawmen. Previously on Lawmen. I'd been thinking about that because I bought an excellent book recently called Mystery Animals of Britain and Ireland. And it's it's a book, I put it on, on our social platforms and it generated mm. the most chit-chat of anything. Did you get engagement, James? I think. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at a chart and that line's going up. Up, up, up. I think in part because it has its contents page on the cover, so it just lists the best bits in the book. The Surrey Puma, the Beast of Exmoor, <laughs> the Big Grey Man of Ben McDewey. <laughs> they say you shouldn't judge a book by a cover. That book knows that people do mm. and has just skipped over the whole cover thing altogether, gone straight to the contents yep. page. Do it. The Horseman of County Louth. Ooh. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but do you want to just hear a little bit about the Horseman of County Louth? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay, this happened in 1966. John Farrell and Margaret Johnson were driving down a country road in County Louth in the Republic of Ireland, and they were driving past Lord Dillon's estate when a huge animal loomed up in the road ahead. John braked... Um, and what Miss Johnson saw was a huge horse with a man's face and horrible bulging eyes. Wow, that horse has a man's face. A huge horse with a man's face and horrible bulging eyes. Those eyes are bulging more than I would expect. I think he screamed, but both of us were so frightened that we were paralysed. The thing had a horse's body, but it was the face, leering and hairy and huge, which shocked. And then they drove away, very scared. Does everyone know about the frozen chicken ghost? What? Have we mentioned the frozen chicken ghost before? I don't think I've heard of that. It's a London ghost. It's in Highgate. Lord Francis Bacon... Himself the ghost of a pig. (laughs) A French pig. Um, (laughs) He was doing some experiments with using snow and ice to preserve things. And he had it in his head that he could freeze a chicken. Nah, never happened. So it's crazy talk. This is in 1626, and he was pondering the preservative effect of snow and ice. So he had his coachman buy him a chicken from the farm that they were passing, pluck it, gut it, kill it, pluck it, gut it. That's the order. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the standard order. And he started stuffing the bird with handfuls of snow and put it in a bag filled with more snow. And it says here, while doing so, however, fits of vomiting and shivering, which he'd already felt on his coach journey, grew worse. And he took refuge in a friend's house in Highgate and then died. Oh, wow. And there's a ghost associated with it. But it's not Lord Francis Bacon's ghost. It's not the ghost of a French pig. It's the ghost of that chicken. (coughs) 300 years later, during air raids in the Second World War, several aircraftmen, firefighters and residents of Pond Square in the area reported seeing a large bird, unable to fly because most of its feathers have been plucked, running around in circles and flapping the stumps of its wings. Oh. And it was seen again in the 60s and 70s, and it would just dropped out of the sky. What? With a squawk. And whenever it's seen, it is shivering. (laughs) Because it's cold. I guess so. Because of the snow. So he did preserve that chicken in the end Uh, yeah for all time in the afterlife Mm, that is bizarre taking us back to our region one last little fun animal tale that comes from chipping sodbury which is near chipping camden because chipping is a local word meaning to cheapen it basically means it's a market town there's a junction of broad street and high street and there's a cat that haunts it but that's not a ghost because that cat was also the victim of an experiment by an alchemist who was trying to concoct a potion which would give something everlasting life. It haunts it in the sense that it always hangs around there, but it's not a ghost. It's an alive cat that's still alive because the alchemist, he succeeded in making this immortal life potion, but foolishly left it in a saucer on the ground. And the cat drank it. And you know what? He never managed to repeat that experiment. And so that cat wanders the earth. No, just a little bit of chipping Sodbury. Oh, right. But forever. And will do forever. If you heard that there was free chicken down in Highgate, it might get the bus or something, whatever <laughs> cats do when they need to travel. Link that cat up with the ghost chicken and just try and hammer this thing out. Uh, what? Well, and that's the worst superhero team ever. <laughs> yeah, an immortal cat and a very cold chicken. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm trying to. I'm trying to do cold chicken noise, but that's good. That's that, good because yeah. the teeth, the, the teeth can't chatter, obviously, because they don't have them. It'd just be a beak. Just the kitten could, I suppose, wrap itself around the chicken to to warm it somewhat. I don't think they're going to get on. Oh, okay. The immortal they're cat the and the uh, ghost plucked chicken. Oh yeah, stick them in a flat together. I'm watching it. The heating is on too high. <laughs> the chicken's like, but I am the ghost of a cold chicken. It's going to take us forever to pay off this heating bill. Well, it's lucky because <laughs> you're immortal and, I'm a, and I've been preserved. Right, so the real thing I wanted to tell you about Chip and Camden is a man called Robin, described in this book, Folklore and Mysteries of the Cotswolds by Mark Turner, as a tiny man who was thought by many to be rather odd because he always talked about how there was a ghost in his cottage, and his cottage was called Robin's Cottage, unimaginatively. Mm. He said there was a ghost of a little girl, which had appeared many times, who had run down the length of his back garden on fire. Oh, I don't like that. Mm. And jump into the stream at the foot of the garden. People thought he was odd because he would bang on about this ghost so much. Yeah. On the one hand, you would think that was odd. But on the other hand, if you saw that, you would bang on about it. You would mention it. Yeah, it's come up. One time he was found digging at the bottom of his stairs because he'd seen the little ghost girl again descending into the floor beneath the stairs. Wow, this... mm. And on three occasions, a Catholic priest conducted an exorcism but it was kind of i think that was more to just shut up this guy because he Mm. would not stop banging on about it and everyone thought it was just odd and made it up but several years later a bank manager came to live at the cottage who could be more trustworthy than a bank manager he saw the ghost of the little girl too Mm. and he found that his back door was unlocked and unbolted although he was certain that he'd locked it the night before wow then one time the neighbor of of robin of odd robin had his son and his two little granddaughters to say these two little girls gave independent accounts that they had seen a little girl with her arms waving wildly running down the garden Mm. with her upper body surrounded by a blue light oh the blue flame yeah the blue fire so maybe odd robin wasn't so odd yeah or maybe he set a child on fire and came up with the perfect cover story he couldn't stop setting children on fire (laughs) in his garden that's the secret do it and then just tell people it's a ghost and they'll be like is that a child on fire classic robin oh robin where's little marjorie gone (laughs) why is there loads of kids bodies in this stream (laughs) yeah i hadn't really thought about that side of it yeah yeah No, there's an admin issue. So I thought I'd look up Robin's Cottage and see what it looks like. Have a little look. Had a little Google around. And I think it's an Airbnb now. Oh, The reviews don't mention a Burning Girl ghost as far as I can see. Mm. But I've seen a few. I can't can't quite work out because there's a place called Robin's Cottage in Chipping Camden, but it doesn't have a stream at the end. I suppose a stream could be redirected or covered over. I did even more digging. Not like Robin at the bottom of the stairs, just on, <laughs> just looking at things on the internet. And I found a map of the flood areas or the flood likely areas in Chipping Camden. And whilst I couldn't find one called Robin Cottage that was in the flood area, implying that there could be water nearby, I did find one weirdly called Controversy House. What? That is an amazing name. This is an amazing name for a house. Like a Charles Dickens novel. Yeah, but even Charles Dickens, I think, would think that's a bit obvious. A little bit on the nose. Yeah. (laughs) What's the story of Controversy House? Maybe it's that someone who lived there kept setting fire to children. (laughs) People are so judgmental these days, so ready to leap to judgment. Or in a stream when they're on fire. (laughs) So ready to leap. Towards water, while aflame. I mean, all the the other houses have got normal names. Your normal, you know, Brookside House, Mm. that's near the river. Oh, and there's one called The Tining. The Tining? There's one even more unimaginatively named The Cottage. Meh. Meh. So, bucking onto the water is a house called Controversy House. That fits the description. One called Pavement Cottage. (sighs) I've just found Robin's Cottage on the map. What?! Uh, I've just what, found it on the map. During the recording, you've just found yeah, it. Yeah, live. It's next door to Diamond Cottage. Diamond Cottage. It's four doors down from Daphne. Not Daphne's Cottage. Daphne. Just Daphne. <laughs> just Daphne. Yeah, I found Robin's Cottage. There it is. Wow. It is outside of the flood area, but it does have a stream at the bottom, and it is on 
Park Road. If you live in Robin's Cottage, get in touch. Yes. Let us know if you are on fire. And is there a hole at the bottom of your stairs? Yeah. Because someone kept digging there. Mm -hmm. So that's... um, a sort of, I suppose it is kind of an animal themed one because a robin is a type of animal. Yeah, well, very clever, very clever. But that's those are me loosely, uh, loosely linked bunch of stories. I like it when you bring in a grab bag, James. A shake shaft special. The shake shaft special, yes. Just all the bits of loose batter from the chip shop. You know, you can just get a bag of batter. Oh, bag of bits. That's what this is like. Delicious. With a bit of vinegar. Do you remember they monetized bags of bits? Because they used to be free. Did they? You just have to ask for them. Can I have a bag of bits? Yeah, it's 50p a minute. Oh, 50p for a bag of bits. You just go throw them away. Are you, are you being kidnapped as a child? <laughs> <laughs> you sound muffled. Is someone going to take you to their cottage and put you on fire? <laughs> I'm a bloody hot not, not before I finish me bag of bits. Oh, what's that word for when you're, when you're wet? Uh, satched. I'm satched. I'm satched, so it would be quite good if so if someone caught, but then I'd end up satched again because I'd have gone in that stream. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my Geordie child v- v- varies wildly in tone from sentence to <laughs> sentence. Gets very angry. Furious child, furious child. <laughs> Holding on to a lot of anger there. Mm. I enjoyed that story very much. Thank you for that bag of bits, James. Anytime. So that was currently on Loremen. I've just received a note from the commissioner, James, mm? that says that in the northeast, bag of bits were known as scraps. Oh, a bag of scraps. Just scraps. Just it, which really emphasises the growing up as a Victorian orphan vibe yeah. that the northeast has. Can I have some scraps? Anyway, are you ready to score me? I am. Come on then, bring on your score. Bring on the score sheet. I will. <laughs> I'm licking, I'm licking with the end of my pencil. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's horrible. Why do people do that? They don't need to be wet to work. What era are you from? I did it a couple of times at school because you'd see it on the telly and yeah. it was horrible. Disgusting. So, are you going to score me, firstly, on names? Names. I think the names have been quite good. Francis Bacon. Tiny Odd Robin. Tiny Odd Robin. Chipping Sodbury. That always seems to get a laugh. Controversy House. Controversy House. You can almost hear the harpsichord being played in Controversy House. <laughs> the theme tune of the British TV drama, Controversy House. Oh, the bear haunted part of the town called Heavenly Corner. Oh, yeah, that's quite good. And the dogs went to Catbrook. <laughs> yeah, OK, that's nice. I think it's a respectable three. How do you feel about that? Bit hard done by. Someone's laying the foundations for their own controversy house. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's just got planning permission. Yeah, controversy in the house. I think it's a three. Fine, then. Robin is not that unusual a name for a man. It isn't really. OK. Supernatural. Oh, what? You can't move for ghosts in this story, James. Yeah. You move one ghost aside, there's another ghost behind it. Yeah. You find a ghost chicken, he's only teamed up with an immortal cat. Yeah, and they're hunting a big ghost bear that scares dogs. Yeah, it's against nature. That's the in this weird animal version of the Avengers. Not the Marvel Avengers, the proper Avengers. The t- British TV series, the Avengers. Oh, 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 just a little side ghost, by the way. Um, Catbrook Corner, there's a ghost of a man called Marshall there. Oh? Huh? Yeah. Mm. There was a triangular patch of grass with a pile of stones at this junction and it was apparently where Marshall had been hanged and it was known as Marshall's grave and the pile of stones was to prevent Marshall from rising from the ground. Oh, nice. But it didn't work because his ghost kept coming back. Get more stones on there. Uh, one ghost chased a load of dogs down to the other end of it's town five out of five. where there was another the ghost. can't escape ghosts. They're being dive bombed by ghost chickens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's more of a cold pigeon noise. Maybe the pigeon's the interpreter. <laughs> Stop drowning the pigeon. <laughs> the little girl's got it. She's pulling it into the river. And, and the chicken is enjoying enjoying the warmth momentarily. Of the burning ghost of, girl. Of the burning ghost girl, yeah. Oh, it's busy, isn't it? There's a lot happening. It's like a where's Wally. Next category then. Menagerie slash ghost zoo. Oh, first of all, both great names for bands. Menagerie or Ghost Zoo? Oh, well, I was going with Menagerie slash Ghost Zoo. Two different bands. Menagerie slash. <laughs> Very violent imagery in that name. And mm. Ghost Zoo, who are a bit more sort of electronica. It's sort of repeating the supernatural one, isn't it? We've just got a load of... I've got a load of ghost animals. There's a lot of animals in this, And yeah. I need to do something with them. You've got a job lot of ghost animals, and you need to shift them. I forgot to mention the Tower of London ghost bear. Oh, that's a second ghost bear. There's meant to be a ghost... Because I was trying to find another example of a ghost bear. 
but there was just that one in the Tower of London. That's all I got for ghost bears. It could be where that the original Camden bear ended up. Because he didn't have a job anymore. He sort of retired and thought, I'll see the sights. Yeah, he was, he was picked up by those people and we don't know where they took him. Could have been to the Tower of London. It could have been. He could have been a treasonous bear. There is, there is actually, in Mystery Animals of Britain and Ireland, well, apart from the horsemen of County Louth, there's the Abbey House animal, the things under the bed, the man monkey... The big grey man of Ben McDrew. <laughs> the demon in the stable and the beast in the orchard. Buckets of animals. Give me 5p and you can come and look in my ghost zoo. I've got a... Actually, it's not that good a zoo, is it? I've got I've got a chicken with no feathers on it that's moaning. You've got a frozen chicken. That's not really an exhibit. I've got an immortal cat, <laughs> which is, f- for all intents and purposes, a cat. Yeah, you have to wait a really long time to get the value out of an immortal cat. I've got a ghost, but they say it's a ghost bear, but... It was only a year later. Mm. I think it was just a bear. So you've got an actual bear in your ghost zoo. Ah, oh, this ghost zoo's rubbish. It's a complete rip-off. And then there's a disturbing burning girl running past. <laughs> <laughs> and thematically a bit jarring. Yeah, that's not a good tour guide. It's too far. Slow down. In spite of it being a terrible rip-off, a terrible grocklebait scam, mm. it's five out of five. Yeah, can you put that on my trip advisor, please? Five out of five, trip advisor. Five out of five. We enjoyed the burning girl. <laughs> the tour guy was not very good. <laughs> the tour guy. Oh, I forgot about the tour guy. Friend of the show, the tour guy. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed the zoo despite the thematic unevenness of the burning ghost girl and just a man called Robin in a cage <laughs> looking looking weird. Yeah, he's not exactly a bird, is he? The bird man. <laughs> That's just a man with a bird's name. Okay, final category then. I'm going to take that. I realise I'm trying to talk myself out of a five there, so I'm going to move quickly on. That's safe. That's in the bank. Which is an <laughs> view and me. Now that will have been bleeped. So, what are you saying there? An of you and me. If you assume you make an of you and me. If you assume you make an ass of you and me. No, if you assume. (laughs) How are you? You make an ass of you and me. (laughs) I don't think that works if you pronounce it You have to pronounce it ass. What, like the donkey? That's what it means. I thought it was like you... You're making a bum out of yourself. Yeah, a natural bum. I don't think it means that, James. Have you been saying if you assume it makes an ass out of you and me to people? Yes! That doesn't work. It's wordplay. I say if you assume. (laughs) Have you been deliberately mispronouncing assume in order to set that up all this time? Yes! It's been playing the long game. (laughs) I thought people were just putting on an American accent to do it for some reason. Uh, Wait, how do you pronounce Ass when it's a donkey. How do you pronounce that? What? James, you're looking at a zero here unless you pull out some persuasive argumentation soon. Well, it sort of fits into the ghost zoo as well because they assume, that, which makes an ass, mm. an ass of them, they assume that that bear was not an just a bear. Yeah, 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 yeah. For some reason, they just assume it's a ghost. Lord Francis Bacon assumed that it was a good idea to mess around with snow whilst he was clearly already ill. Mm, yeah, that seems like a mistake. And that killed him. And also, you shouldn't be handling food while vomiting. <laughs> yeah. Don't actually be vomiting as you're stuffing a chicken. Onto it. I know it was the 17th century, but come on. The alchemist assumed that he could put a saucer of liquid on the floor and his cat wouldn't eat it. I mean, who does that? Who? Oh, I finally made a precious thing. Just I'll just pop it on the floor in a saucer. You could have kicked it. Yeah. Like, come on. What did you expect to happen? Maybe everyone assumed that Robin wasn't a serial killer. I think this is a low-scoring category, and I think you've argued poorly, James. What? However, uh? I think in doing so, you have made an ass of you and me. Yes. So it's five out of five. Yeah, I think that's good. But that that is a high price, and that price has been paid by the listener. What have we made them? We've made them think twice about doing whatever we ask them to do about signing up to the Patreon or supporting (laughs) us in general in the bit that comes after this. Oh, no. So I'm not going to ask for Patreon money now, James, because we've made ourselves look like fools. We really can't. We've wasted their time and ours. And I want to apologise to everyone from Northern and the Republic of Ireland. Yes, the entire island of Ireland. 
because I did a Belfast accent for County Louth because I misheard you and thought you'd said Northern Ireland. And I did a sort of on the way to County Mayo accent because it's the only one I can do. So apologies to the people. Yes. You've been listening to Lawmen with me, Alistair Bigger King. And me, Jim Shakespeare. This isn't a Northern Irish two Ronnies you're doing now. It's the two Ronnies there. <laughs> I want four candles. Back when I wasn't a vegetarian when I was a kid, I would have a battered sausage, and it's just instant sadness yeah. eating a battered sausage. Oh, like, you have one bite of battered sausage, you think, this is great. And then from the second bite onwards, just... This is too greasy. Bring death upon me. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah. This is the end. Yeah. I no longer feel joy in life <laughs> because of this battered sausage. I'm going to eat all of it. Oh, yeah, I'll finish it. But I'm probably not going to have room for the chips. I love a bag of bits. I love some scraps. Oh, I, oh, I have a bag of bits, please drive. I don't know why dri- the bus driver's given it. Um, <laughs> I, t- I must have told you that the bus driver used to sell duty-free cigarettes in Durham. No. Yeah, on the uh, Bob Smith's bus, as I think it was. The Bob Smith's bus? Yeah, you'd be driving around Langley Park or somewhere. Yeah. And then the bus would stop and people would get on. Yeah. Buy a big pack of duty-free cigarettes from the driver and then get back off. On the next stop, or just straight off? Just no, 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 straight, straight off. Yeah, like it was a like it was an ice cream van for cigarettes. I presume he didn't have one of them sort of protective glasses like they do in London, and he had to feed it out like one <laughs> cigarette at a time through the speaking <laughs> hole. <laughs> that little mesh thing. Yeah, it's more hygienic. People put their lips up to that little hole. <laughs> uh, yeah, like a pneumatic. <laughs> He'll pop the little cigarette into that. Because it's like in a circle, isn't it, with like 20 holes? Yeah, they'd, that's a pack. They'd line up all the f- cigs and you just have to... <laughs> <laughs> you'd and have to go, oh. and then you'd have to hold your breath until you got off the bus. <laughs> and spit them into your own silver boop, packet. Boop, 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 yeah. Wow, that seems like a very efficient way of dispensing contraband. Great system. Do you ever go on the bus in London where it's got that little one-person seat underneath the steps mm. that's right behind the driver. I, I love the little one-person seat. The yeah, me too. VIP seat. Yes. Have you ever been there when the machine has stopped working? No. What happens? Because you know sometimes the, the Oyster card, the, you know, the beep on yes. thing on a bus where you don't have to touch or look at anyone. You it's just beep it on. Sometimes that doesn't work. And so people sort of stun their pressing about three times and the bus driver will just wave you on and you get a free bus ride. It's a bonus. Because it turns out the buses can drive whether or not you pay. Yes. The bus doesn't know. And what happens if you're sat in the driver's mate seat, as I like to call it, people will bip, the driver will wave them on, and just because of the way people's eye lines go as they turn, they will make eye contact with you. And you could sort of feel like you've got a bit of power, just sort of nod. Yeah, no, it's fine. Yeah, you can get on. Yeah. <laughs> No, carry on, carry on. You've been like the maitre d bus. <laughs> maitre oui. d'omnibus. Oui, oui. Uh, please to be taking your seats. <laughs> no beeps. <laughs> not necessary to beep. Please to take your seat immediately. <laughs> and if they go, uh, drive, um, whereabouts do I get off? Of th- uh, 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 <laughs> tap, dot, tap on the no speaking sign. Tap, tap, tap. You talk to me. Don't talk to them. You talk to me.